Ollie? Where's my fritter? What is going on guys? Will here, welcome to the video. So I was born in 1994, I'm a 90s baby, so I never got to live through the good old 80s. So in today's video, we're gonna see what the people of the 80s were serving up on their plates, doing in the gymnasiums before Will was re not released. Released? Before Will was released, no. Before Will was, Pushed out? Before Will was pushed out of his mother's womb. So let's get into meal number one. Okay, so I am starving. So for meal number one, we have grapefruit, cottage cheese, and cinnamon toast crunch. So starting with the grapefruit, I mean, I prefer to have this as breakfast in bed, but the grapefruit diet, also known as the Hollywood diet, was introduced in the 1930s, but then came back larger than life in the 80s, known as the 10 day, 10 pounds off diet, because they said that you could lose 10 pounds in 10 days because people believe that there was an enzyme in the grapefruit that made you burn fat. And while there's many alternate uses for the grapefruit, burning fat is not one of them. So I'll put an example of the grapefruit diet on the screen right here. So as you guys can see, it's pretty much you're having half a grapefruit with every meal. Calories were limited to around 800 calories a day. So that right there is what's gonna burn the fat, not the grapefruit itself. And I love grapefruit, as you guys know. So I'm excited. Not very familiar with eating it though, but I picked good ones, never any white in it. Also have some cottage cheese on the side, another diet food of the 30s that came back larger than life in the 80s, and it is still known today as the 80s diet food. Doesn't look all that great, but it works. Coincidentally, the motto of my OnlyFans. Interesting mouthfeel, I like it. Okay, so let's get into the Cinnamon Toast Crunch. So Cinnamon Toast Crunch, one of America's favorite cereals, established in 1984. The taste you can see, they say, that sounds a lot more like a, an LSV ad than a cereal ad. And take a look at the box from the 80s to now. So here we have this like little cracked out piece of toast. I guess that's what sells these days. So the taste you can see, yep, covered in lines. Can't think of a better way to start my day. There we go, looks about right. A little cashew milk. All right, the smell of this cereal is just an aphrodisiac on its own. Put cinnamon sugar on it and I'll put it in my mouth. Simple as that. See, this is how cereal should be eaten, not like that Greg Doucette video, where I had two full boxes of cereal dry. Oh my God, that was horrific. We going back in, we going back in. I feel like with cereal, you either don't eat it or you eat the whole box. There's like no in between. All right, well that was delicious, mildly nutritious with the cereal. So now I'm gonna go get changed and get into the first workout of the day, which is a home 80s workout. Okay, so the at-home workout we are gonna be following is from Jane Fonda. We're gonna try one of her workouts. So she released her first ever workout video in 1982. After that, released 22 videos over 13 years and sold over 17 million copies. So she is very influential. So we're gonna try one of her original workouts and see how it goes. I haven't seen this many flexible girls in one scene, at least on YouTube before. Her eye contact is just kind of intimidating. I usually love good eye contact. Are these girls done tons of pre-workout? Like they're like screaming. Like... This is really testing my rhythm. Two, three, keep your elbows back. 
At least the other guys have the same range of motion as me, so I don't feel as bad. These girls, man, where do you find them? No, seriously, where do you find them? I'll tell you what, this is opening some new doors for me. Not fitness related. Oh, she's really going. Oh, she's ri- Oh, she's- Oh my- No, that's not- What the heck? All right, well, um, I feel tired, mostly confused. Definitely gonna be a little bit more uh, embarrassed putting this on the internet compared to the other stuff I've done. But at least it did one thing. It gave me an appetite, so let's go have some lunch. Okay, so for lunch today, we have some pasta salad, but not just any regular pasta salad. We have tri-colored, pasta salad, which is great because I love tasting the rainbow. So inside it, I'm gonna add some cherry tomatoes. You can also go in with some cucumber. So we're really tapping into my toys today. So this morning, the grapefruit, now the cucumber, what the heck would I do for YouTube? That is going in. And for the dressing, a very classic combination. Going in with some zesty Italian dressing. So apparently no barbecue was complete without this pasta salad. So in this day and age, What's trending now is like $40 salads, but pasta salads in the 80s, that's something I can get behind. So what a beautiful looking threesome we got here. I'm gonna plate that up. And then with the pasta salad, we got some blackened chicken. So apparently anything blackened back in the day was big, and to my acknowledgement, anything blackened is still big. So we got some chicken breast with some Cajun seasoning on top. This is the one I used, and that is lunch, and that's also gonna be the pre-weight training meal. I have not had tri-colored pasta salad in quite a long time. Come on, receive my fork. Mmm. Definitely one of the cheaper, tastier, and safer menage a trois I've had. That is really good. Damn. So you guys know Arnold dominated the bodybuilding scene in the 70s, but Lee Haney came in in the 80s, completely took over, winning from 1984 all the way to 1991, eight-time Mr. Olympia winner. Uh, so in honor of him, we are gonna be doing his workout today. So he's a three-day split. It goes uh, shoulders and back, and then chest and arms, legs, off, repeat. So we're gonna try his shoulders and back workout today. It's very similar to my style of training, heavy compound movement, so I'm pretty excited for it. Do you have any fond memories in the 80s, Mom? Can you share one with, with the audience? Well, your dad and I got married in 1986. Really? Yeah. High school sweethearts and <clears throat> then we got married in 1986 after dating for seven years. And then where is he now? Come in the camera, everyone's like just seeing your arm right now. Your jacked arm. What were the what were the kids doing in the parties in the 80s, you know? You didn't you seemed like you partied hard. I did not party hard. Oh I, you totally no. did. This is really good. This is uh, Italian dressing. Do you put Italian dressing on the pasta salad? People used to put Italian dressing on the salad a lot, yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. mm. it was in a craft bottle. That was <clears throat> pretty much what you used. Very tangy. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like it. I'm sure you would like that. What's that supposed to mean? Is there like a double meaning to that? No. Ollie just pooed on the floor. Oh, perfect, because I just took him out. Good oh, job, yeah. balls. And literally, just brought him in. So I guess I'm your favorite son for today for once. <laughs> All right, so we are at the gym right now about to do Total Lee Awesome's workout. So Lee Haney, Total Lee. Uh, so the chest and back workout I'll put on the screen right now. It seems very basic uh, compound movements, eight to 10, six to eight rep range. So that means just heavy weights, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing is lap pull down on the queue right now. We got some Madonna, we got some Guns N' Roses and some Michael Jackson. Here we go.
Okay, so the workout is complete. That was a very good workout. If I had to critique that in any way, I would just say I wasn't a big fan of the order of the exercises. I probably went from shoulders to back, shoulders to back, alternating between the two, starting off with the overhead press, then going on to the T-bar row, because by the time I got to the overhead press during this workout, I was completely wiped out, especially with all the heavy weights. But now it is time for the post-workout meal. And no matter what time zone we are honoring, we gotta find a way to fit a donut in. And luckily I found out that Coffee Time, which is a Canadian franchise, was actually established in 1982. They have around 100 locations across Canada. So I'm I'm actually parked out front of one right now. We're gonna go inside, get a donut, which I'm very excited about because I've never had one before and we'll do a little taste test. Okay, we back. So I got a medium coffee black and then I got a Boston cream donut and these things look huge. What the heck have I been missing out on? I drive past this thing all of the time. Like look at the size of this thing. I am excited. It is squishy, it is chocolatey, it looks like it's jam-packed filled. Wait a second. This isn't a Boston cream. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's whipped cream in the center. It's not the, the filling that I desire. The actual donut itself is really good, but my oh my, that is a letdown. That's like very similar to having an oatmeal cookie and you think it's chocolate chips, but it's actually raisin and you get all disappointed. The exact same feeling. Okay. There's something to this dough that's just different. Well, this one tastes like cakey, a little bit croissant-like, but there's substance to it. I like it a lot. Now I'll try this coffee. I mean, a place called Coffee Time, they better have good coffee. Their slogan is, coffee time is any time, and I couldn't agree more. Mm, nice and strong. Boston cream done. Now, up until 1981, granola was absolutely huge and it convinced companies to make granola bars. So companies are coming out with crunchy granola bars, but Quaker was like, let's do something a little bit different. Let's come out with some chewy bars. And they came out with chewy granola bars and they completely stole the show. So these things here were like one of the biggest snacks in the 80s and I'm a 90s baby. And even this was a staple in my lunchbox. I'm pretty sure it's a staple in kids' lunchboxes today. So I have the s'mores chewy bar. 100 calories, these things are really good. The things that you can get other kids to do if you have one of these in your lunchbox. I always make sure my mom packed me too. It has been a minute since I've had one of these. A lot smaller than I remember. So granola bar sales peaked in 1985, a $377.3 million business. That is just insane. I can see why, these are amazing. Mm. Okay, so dinner tonight is gonna be an 80s classic, the Sloppy Joe, originally known as the Loose Meat Sandwich back in the 1930s, and it wasn't until the 1940s it was called the Sloppy Joe. So I can't get behind the Sloppy Joe conceptually because loose meat, meat is better when it's tight. But, so we have the buns, we have the meat, but then we have the sauce that my mom picked up, and what's it called? It's called the Manwich Sandwich. Manwich, it sounds a little bit sexual to me. I'm intrigued. No. Or, it so does not. When I was a kid, this commercial played all the time, constantly. I'll play it if I can find it. Manwich sandwich. Yeah? Yeah. Kind what of, is it? Is it like, is it a barbecue sauce type of thing? You know what? I think it's like glorified spaghetti sauce, kind of. Oh. So you Just, remember having Sloppy Joe's as a kid? I totally remember having this. It was not my favorite because yeah. it kind of all got soggy and everything. We have all the veggies cut up here. Got some carrots, onions, peppers, jalapenos. Gonna add some pickles because who does not like some pickles between their buns? And then instead of uh, beef, we wanna keep the calories down a little bit, so we're gonna add some ground turkey. So I'm gonna put together this uh, very meat forward dinner and then we're gonna dive in head first. These are the buns that I got right here. They look nice and wet. Pro tip, if you guys are in the bakery aisle looking for a good hamburger bun to buy, you always wanna find one that looks like the baker just like gently brushed it with his tongue. Isn't that right, Mom? No. I think it is. No. You just know that's, like, look at this. It's like freshly licked, it's shiny. I know, but I'm gonna give you, the, here's the pro tip. Mm. If you are having sloppy joes, the pro tip is you have to toast these like well toasted because otherwise it just gets all soggy. So just toast on the inside and then you leave the outside soft? Well, I, I you know me, I like press it. Yeah, I would say definitely well toasted because it sort of is like a repellent to all of that sloppy joe juice. Yeah. Because it's just gonna soak in and it's just gonna be an abomination. I like that. That sounds pretty good to me. Ooh. 
You really went in with the whole can just now. You're supposed to. Okay. All right, so we're ready to plate it up. Look how beautifully the bun got toasted. Got the pickles on there. All right, mom, go for it. All right, let's try getting some on the actual bread too. No, that's why it's called sloppy. Okay, this just looks like an absolute, like, it's... are you like an artist right now? Like, <laughs> what the heck are you? That's how you make it. Oh, You realize well, maybe... I have to eat this with my hands. Maybe not that. And then this apparently goes on like that. Just like that. All right, yeah, that is the definition for the sloppy joe. There. All right. So we are going in on my mom's sloppy joe and this thing is massive. It looks like I'm gonna be like choking on some meat. I love it. I even got some side meat here too. This is just a fun, loving, no hold back dish. I'd imagine this thing would be pretty, pretty unhealthy typically, wouldn't it be mom? I think that was, the health aspect was not high on the agenda. Yeah, I mean, if you had one of these every day, you too would be history. <laughs> I'm still able to buy that at Walmart, so. Oh, wow. Wow, I that pickle makes it. I tell you, pickle, if I could pick any anything that goes on a hamburger, it would be a pickle. That is good. It is rich, boy. So what does it taste like? Chili? Spaghetti sauce? It tastes like, it just tastes like I got drunk, like, and came home from the club, and I just didn't know what to do, you know? Awesome. It's good. I don't think so. You don't need a damn towel. Unfortunately, I forgot my, my rag in my condo. I like Hamburger Helper better than that. Oh, I love Hamburger Helper. Yeah. Helper. I love Hamburger Helper. I'm not the most enthusiastic person when it comes to food, don't you think? You are pretty enthusiastic. Yeah. yeah. I'd be a great food critic. Yes. In another lifetime. I'm assuming you didn't want one. No. No? Okay, I'm going in. So after this, all we have left is dessert. And what do you guys think that would be? Comment down below. Now it tastes like pure ketchup. Just straight up ketchup. <clears throat> it's like a kid got into a cabinet. Didn't know what to do. Mm. Mm. All right, well that was dinner. Super good. I mean, the first half was good. The second half just got kind of gross a little bit. I mean, I would recommend giving it a try. I mean, if you're trying to hit your protein, a great option, so. See you guys at dessert. Stop. Wrapping up the night watching some Back to the Future, a big movie in the 80s, came out in 1985. And for my dessert, I have a coffee here that I mixed in around a quarter of a scoop of Post Factor by Blue Star Nutraceuticals. Uh, the cappuccino flavor mixes in so well, highly recommend it. 10 e 10 for 10% off. And the main event of today for dessert is this beautiful tiramisu. So tiramisu was massive in the 80s, so Coffee flavor dessert, coffee, and then a coffee flavor protein. Can't think of a better way to end the day. Other big desserts were a pineapple upside down cake and some trifle. And mascarpone cheese, the ingredient specifically, was also very big in the 80s. So let's get into this. Mm. Let me know in the comments down below what decade you guys would like to see next. It seems like the 30s would be pretty cool. You know, we had a lot of influence from the 30s today, like the grapefruit, the cottage cheese, and then we had the sloppy joe. So the 30s could be pretty interesting, but let me know. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap up the video here, but before I do, a couple fun facts about the 80s are that the McNuggets that we all know and love were invented in 1983. Steve Jobs was actually fired from his own company in 1985, and then Michael Jackson's Thriller album came out in 1982. All pretty cool stuff. The 80s seems like a great time. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.